Welcome back YouTubers. In this video, we're going to be talking about Criterion Burials. Criterion Burials is a brand that has been well known and established by professional shooters. It was used at some point by the Army competition uh, team. It's I think I read somewhere in one of the forums that the governors tend in the state of Florida that this is what they were shooting with. So Criterion Barrels is a well-known brand, but it's also well-known and used by the three-gun competition type reloaders, people who is always trying to achieve the maximum accuracy out of their barrels by reloading, always uh, refining the amount of powder, pressures, and all those things. They always chase Criterion Barrels. There are also a few of them are hard to keep in stock because they really don't last too much. A Criterion Barrel also made barrels for a uh, that barrel that was passed to you from your relative second world war for the m1 garand for m1 uh, carbines it's all they also made barrels for the hawa and like 30 something varieties of firearms out there in the industry it's your homework to check which one they might have available for your firearms my experience is based on my ar-15 that's what i use mostly all the time ar-15 uh, your 223 556 uh, criterion barrels i to me these are one of the best on the market currently that's why I'm, I'm doing this video. At this point, this is not an endorsement. This is not a paid advertisement. It is based solely on my opinion and my uh, uh, experience with Criterion Barrels. That's why I'm recommending it to you. Before I did this video, I made sure all firearms were clear. So you don't have to be afraid. If there's no way they will shoot through the screen for those people with phobias and fears of firearms and weapons. Uh, these are made for the uh, AR-15, which is the civilian version of the M4 military assault rifle. This is the ones over here. They will never shoot and burst. In the United States, the M4 carbines, they will never be sold to civilians unless you pay a high price for a special fee. Then you can have your fully automatic rifles. With all those things says, I would highly recommend you to buy a Criteria Barrel. In my experience, it's really on the top of my list. The caliber that is going to be available for AR-15 is going to be the 223 or 556. They make them for 223 wild. They have the 300 blackout for those people who like to shoot suppressed, extremely quiet. And they also make them for 6.5 8 rental uh, calibers. I would highly recommend them. I cannot stop praising them. I'm very pleased with my purchase. So welcome. Once you order your barrel, this is what you're going to be receiving from the mail when you open it. Make sure you put some paper or something. The barrel will come really soaked and wet in oil. They may batch productions and then they put them in like stocks and then it's up to them. They really soak them in oil in order to prevent any kind of rust or damage in case they stay in the warehouse for a little bit. And this is what you're going to be receiving. The contours or barrel profile that the Criterion Barrel makes, pretty much they are known for their core series, but I'm going to start from the, the little ones first. They have the pencil barrel, that was the one that was previously used for the M16 that was back in the days. Those are the ones that will tolerate less uh, burst shooting or more uh, shooting. The more you shoot those, the more the barrel is going to heat, and because of the heat, it's going to cause a loss of accuracy. The barrel is going to start whipping more and the barrel is going to lose some accuracy. Yes, you might take your first uh, 30 shots uh, quite accurate, but after 30 shots in a minute, it's going to start whipping. The spread of your shot is going to be when it started like one inch and a half or from one inch to one inch and a half, then it's going to be a little more spread because you hit it those. They have the pencil barrel, which is the first line. Within the pencil barrel, we have a, they also have an ultralight I mean, there is a taste for everybody. If you're not gonna be taking so many shots, you know the ultralight is gonna heat even more than the pencil barrel, but it's just a flavor out there. This one, what I prefer, it is the hybrid, which is not really thin, but it's not the heavy one, the heaviest one that they have in stock. And it's just what I prefer. I do not like to run heavy barrel. I mean, neither the lightest one, because the lightest one, they tend to be spread your shots when you take too many consecutive shots. But the heaviest one, they're less maneuverable. If you ever go hunting, if you ever have in a defensive position or something, or long extended mission or something, they are way too heavy. But there are options. The next option that comes up next to the hybrid, which is the one I chose, it will be the heavy service rifle. Those were the one used by the governor's number uh, 10, which is that the every state in the United States, they have a selected group of uh, personnel guard for the governors, the governor's 10th, I believe. 
those were the one used by them that's why they're so extremely accurate shooters next up to that one is going to be the heavy barrel which is just full bull barrel that's pretty much used for people who are into reloading competition it's way too heavy for my taste pretty much home defense occasional hunt you know but just the flavors out there so you you know what you might be looking for some people are into dmr rifle for target practice some people are into duty some people are into three gun competition i wouldn't choose a heavy barrel for three gun competition but if you want to push the limit of your 556 a 223 rifle 223 wild i would definitely if you're gonna design something for shooting the 77 grains 75 grains i would definitely choose a heavy barrel for the exclusive purpose of reaching far over the average of the 556 rifle the next one is going to be the core which is the one that is always it's that's the one that makes criterion barrel famous but it's also the one that is very hard to catch because that's a lighter than the hybrid it is as accurate as the hybrid i mean they're all accurate but the hi the hybrids the one that likes just slightly heavier than the uh, core those are very hard to catch in stock that's the one that made criterion barrel the famous that's the one that everybody claims to be the best the most popular among them the barrel length depending on your uh, the calibers that you so you chose you yeah, have 223, 556, 224, Valkyrie, 300 Black Cow, and 6.5 Brandy, depending on the caliber that you chose. The barrel length is going to vary from 8.5 to 10.5, 12.5, 13.9, 14.5, 16, 18, and 19 inches uh, long. I like 14.5, so I don't have to be messing with the legalities of a short pistol. We all know what the United States, what the ATF is doing to every gun owner, that you might end up out of the blue being a convicted fellow, even though you own that uh, AR pistol for years and years and years, and it's just, I'm not gonna divert into the legalities, it's just, we all know what we are going through. The, <clears throat> the twist rate is gonna depend for the AR-15, uh, they have them in one in seven for the heaviest uh, bullets, the 62 and above. They have them in one in 7.7 7 for the lightest one and in one in eight, which is going to balance. I prefer one in eight. This is what I chose from all my uh, barrels. They, those twos are also, were built also using Criterion barrels. I really, this is the one I will always praise and recommend among all the brands out there. The gas led, uh, length system, we pretty much there are four of them in the market. The pistol one that it's the, for those people who are making AR-15 pistols where the gas port, what you see over here, is gonna be very close to where the explosion to where the open and lower receiver. The, the pistol, the closest to the uh, action and everything, that's the more recoil you're gonna be feeling. That's the one that's gonna cause more wear and tear on the internal parts of the AR-15. That's the one that is going to Uh, you know i've seen them uh, popping the retention pin on the tube i've seen them popping all dots i really don't recommend people to buy piston but a lot of people prefer them and there are also way to compensate for the uh, heavy recoil or pistol uh, gas system and also for the wear and tear the m4 which is the military issue one that's going to have the gas this hole over here is going to have it at the carbine length so it's going to be focused on reliability it's going to really make sure even though the soldier or duty even though it was exposed to the uh, mud, sand, rain, get on the water, anything, once you cycle, it's gonna be able to send back a lot of uh, gas through the gas. So it's gonna recycle, this is the way it works. As you can see on this previously armed AR-15, you can see the gas tube. This is a mid-length, same as the previous one. Once the, you make a shot, the gas will go through the block then it's going to come up through the gas block let me see if i can get a picture over here and then through the pipe and then you can see on the top and it's going to push back the bolt repeatedly the ones every time you take a shot it's going to be that gas that is going to push back the bolt and cycle the ar-15 itself I mentioned the pistol, I mentioned the carbine. The next one will be the mid-length. This is what I prefer for all my builds. Uh, they really don't take that much toll on parts. They are not the, the most jumpy among them. Then this is the, it's gonna be right slightly above the middle of the barrel. The next one will be 
a rifle length, which is gonna be pretty much for those 16 and above a barrel length. Those are for people who likes to build uh, M16 a vintage type of rifle. They like to do all those. People who like to enjoy building a designated marksman rifle, they pretty much go for rifle barrel length gas system, which is farther from here. That's gonna be very subtle. A recoil that's going to be barely any wear and tear on the parts that's going to be really really easy to manage for people who have never been exposed to firearms those are for but at the same time the m16 well known during the vietnam war and there's a story that they, they didn't have enough gas to clean any obstruction on the gas tube over here so they're not the heavy duty but they're the easiest to shoot However, most of the modern firearms, like the Knight's Armament, LMT, like the one you see over there, the lower receiver, uh, Geisley, you know, all of them, they are pretty much moving all their uh, current firearm for the mid lane gas system because it is reliable enough to clear any obstruction on the gas tube on the top, and it doesn't take that much wear and tear on the parts of the M4 military assault rifle. Neither one of those are military grade. They only have the one shot, one pull configuration. Neither one is a burst, neither one is a three rounds per uh, trigger press. On the other side, if you choose a 16 to 20 barrel length with a rifle gas system, those are the most comfortable to shoot. Those are the ones that I would recommend people who are first time a home buyer, or not home buyer, rifle uh, builders. Those are the ones that are the less wear and tail, the less recoil, the most uh, muscle velocity, the one with the farther, they're gonna reach really far because they also build up more uh, gas within the uh, barrel. So it's gonna reach farther, they're gonna buck wind the best. Uh, it's just a lot of people, they tend to build the AR pistol because they really want to copy the Mark 18 used by the Navy SEALs. Uh, they mean those people, they move inside submarines, they look, they operate with it really enclosed confinements is just but they also have several ways to compensate like using very specific a uh, bolt carrier groups different very specific gas system is something that unless you use those parts they're really going to take it all on your ar-15 i would highly recommend to start uh, from 14.5 which is the most most well known and uh, balanced within all aspects my barrel description i chose the hybrid contour this is a 14.5. This is a, a mid-length gas system, which is to me in the middle of everything. It's not so aggressive. It's not the one that is going to overheat, but it's not the one that is going to be the less uh, accurate. The, these hybrid configuration, they have them on 13.9 barrel length. They have them on 14.5, which is the one I chose. And they also have them on uh, 16 inches, which are the best for designated marksman. Uh, just remember with a 16 a barrel lens, once you add your muscle break or your muscle flash, they're going, you're gonna be way over 16 inches long. It's gonna be really like, you're gonna be flirting with 18 inches long. It's just, you know, way too long for uh, your home defense situation or moving in the bushes when you're tracking uh, hogs or whatever animal you have to get rid of your uh, property. A lot of people, they prefer the 14.5 once you get a pin and welder, which is a legal aspect to keep in the United States below 16. Is, you will be a convicted felon if you, ever, if you ever assemble an upper receiver less than 16, which I do not endorse. This barrel, this is a chrome line barrel for built for longevity. When you look on the inside, you can tell how polished it is. You're going to have the M4 uh, feeding ramps uh, for reliability, so it's going to make a feeding and extraction very a reliable i've never heard about people who are having trouble uh, with them it's just really 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 accurate they are polished inside if we if i were able to look through the sunlight or any lamp that really feels and look like a mirror oh i got out of focus from the factory once you get them out you have to uh, clean them they have a little bit of burn powder because they will uh, run a powder test and performance test to see how they do the gas hole, the, I like the 0 0.750. There is a smaller 650, but I do not recommend that one because I want to make sure it's going to clear the, the gas tube on the top. This is very controversial. A lot of people are turning their uh, AR-15 into piston type because they don't want to be dealing with 
a reliability issue. Mostly the duty guys wear uniforms, not civilian. I really don't need that kind of reliability. On the front, it comes from the factory already threaded. So you can add your preferred muscle brake or your muscle frag flash. You don't have to pay a gunsmith already and be within uh, legal parameters of your uh, barrel length. The thread is gonna be a half by 21, 28, which is the most uh, common for a 5.56 to 23 uh, kind of uh, rifle. I prefer this kind of uh, configuration, the hybrid ones, 14.5, because they're known to be not the lightest one on the market, but they're not the heaviest one. Uh, they are not the shortest one, but they're not really the 18, 20 inches or, you know, it's just, to me, it's, this is the perfect balance, 14.5 hybrid. As I mentioned before, it has with the M4 uh, ramps, as you can tell over here. Something to keep in mind every time you buy a hybrid type from Criterion Barrel, these are not lightweight barrels. Some people complain that they are kind of heavy. They weigh 1.5. 85 uh, pounds so if you are switching from a pencil barrel from an ultra lightweight barrel to this one you're going to feel the difference immediately you're going to experience fatigue i do not run lightweight barrels on neither one of my uh, ar-15 platforms is to me that's just uh, it's not really convenient something the pros of buy, buying a criterion barrels you definitely are buying quality the fit the finish the reputation that they have throughout years that they built is something that you will experience the these are well known this is a well known um, brand for people who are into uh, ar-15 matches or like semi auto car carbine uh, competition and shooting but it's also known for people who like to stretch the maximum length and accuracy of their uh, ar-15 ar-10 platform in com competitive uh, clubs the cost that I have to say about Criterion rifles is that they are quite expensive. They are not the most expensive uh, barrel makings out there, but they are not the cheapest ones, something that you have to keep in mind. Another, I have to say against Criterion barrel, they can barely keep their core series in stock. Everywhere you see a core series from Criterion barrel, boy, they never last. I thought about getting one of those, but they were out of stock everywhere I looked. On the other side, you can also check on their from time to time Criterion barrel. They also have their blends which is like uh, barrels that they, because of their, throughout their finish process, they have like a scratch or they have like a bulging on their finish or something and you can get in half price. This one on the top, I use a Criterion barrel as well, but it was, I got it on a blend price. It was, I, instead of paying almost $300, I paid like a hundred and something and I, it's the performance is exactly at this one for which I paid full price. With all those things say, I think Criterion barrel is a brand to consider if you're planning about uh, assembling your own AR-15 for recreational purpose, you know, for hunt defend purpose, for hunting purpose. This is a brand that I would highly recommend based on my personal experience. This is not a paid endorsement or anything, it's just paid. It's my opinion and my personal uh, experience. Uh, if you like it, please give it a like, subscribe, share among friends, you know, if you learn something, if you have any question, please ask them on the bottom before. I really appreciate your time. You have a wonderful day and God bless you all. It was a little bit loud. Very good. You got it. One thing that I forgot to mention in the throughout the review of the Criterion Barrel is that at this time and age in 2023, every time you buy a barrel, regardless that it's going to be a Criterion or not, one of the things you have to keep in mind is that the barrel is gonna have a dimple over here so that when you install the gas block uh, it's not gonna be moving around because previously they were only have with a screw that was supposed to be tightened upon the barrel but with the dimple it's insurance some of the barrel makers they have uh, two dimples criterion barrel this one only have one 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 is enough two is just insurance uh, 
this is gonna be my next project as you can see this is an LMT fully ambidextrous that I'm gonna be talking about this is the Rock River Arms a Barmin trigger this is the blue paper there's another yellow one I have no experience with the, with the yellow one but it's just gonna be something that I will be reviewing make sure regardless that you won't be able to buy a frontier and barrel at least make sure they're gonna have the barrel that you will be choosing for your build or replacing your worn out barrel is gonna have the M4 uh, fitting ramps which is these two lines over here so the cartridges are gonna fit properly no matter how hard you trade it if you stop cleaning it make sure you will be able to check that check for the dimple and I would highly uh, suggest you to choose the midland uh, gas so that way it's gonna be less jumpy it's gonna take a, a toll less toll on your uh, moving parts or, or your open receiver open and lower receiver and it's gonna be a lot easier when you if you plan on using it combined with a suppressor so it's gonna be a less aggressive on your part all right thanks that's all good day